Most people can correctly name whose picture is on the U.S. $100 bill. Benjamin Franklin. But did you know that in Franklin's time, paper money was a topic of much debate about its value, its effects on the economy, who should produce it, and even whether it should exist at all? When Ben Franklin was born in 1706, some colonial governments had already begun issuing their own bills of credit, an early form of paper money. However, British rulers passed laws limiting their use. The colonies were seen as sources of raw materials and markets for British finished goods, which had to be purchased with gold and silver. Britain tightly controlled this balance of trade in its favor and prohibited the colonies from minting coins, causing coin shortages throughout the colonies. Despite British regulations, the practice of issuing local paper currency in the colonies grew. Franklin arrived in Philadelphia in 1723 at the age of 17, the same year Pennsylvania issued its first paper money. Franklin observed that the increase in the money supply resulted in improved economic conditions, a rise in local commerce, jobs, and population growth. Franklin soon became immersed in the world of paper money. He designed and printed it, wrote extensively about it, proposed alternative monetary systems, and lobbied in Britain on colonial money matters. Franklin even developed a method that used actual leaves to make casts, producing detailed and intricate patterns on paper currency nearly impossible to counterfeit. But by 1729, the future of paper money was uncertain. Wealthy landowners and political elites preferred gold and silver, or paper money issued by European banks backed by these metals. They feared that colonial money would depreciate, lose value, as it had in some colonies. So what exactly gave colonial paper money its value? In Franklin's view, it was the balance of the money's quantity in relation to the total amount of buying and selling taking place in the issuing colony. He noted two important points. Without enough money in circulation, the economy slowed down because fewer transactions took place. And with too much money in the system, money's value or purchasing power decreased, resulting in inflation. The need for more money to buy the same amount of goods or services as before. So while Franklin saw the need for paper money, he also recognized the challenges it presented, especially if not backed by something of value. He even explored the idea of using land as a guarantee for paper money, because colonies had a fixed amount of land, which would make the paper money more stable. The American Revolution soon underscored Franklin's concerns. In order to finance the war against Britain, the young, cash-poor Continental Congress printed huge amounts of Continental dollars, which weren't backed by anything at all. This vast increase in the money supply resulted in the Continental dollar being virtually worthless by the end of the war. When the Constitution was being drafted, Franklin, ever the pragmatist, recognized the need for a more stable and regulated monetary framework. At the convention, the Founding Fathers took the power to issue paper money away from the state governments and entrusted the power to coin money to Congress. This set the stage for the second era of paper money in America, the rise of a government-chartered but privately run bank-based system. Franklin passed away in 1790, shortly before the first bank of the United States was chartered, heralding the rise of America's first national bank and the creation of a paper currency circulated throughout the new nation. Today, the Federal Reserve System, which operates independently within the U.S. government, 
issues the nation's paper money. And if his picture on the $100 bill is any clue, Benjamin Franklin seems rather pleased. <laughs>